Здравствуйте, уважаемые друзья. Hello, dear friends. We are happy to greet all participants and viewers at the International Roundtable Artificial Intelligence in the Field of Law and Security, Prospects and Risks. This event is a continuation of the International Online Conference Global Crisis. This already affects everyone, which took place at July 24 this year. Development of technology. Is it a cloudless future or a deadly threat, a total control? We will consider artificial intelligence in the field of law and security. Who will be defending us from now on? Who will protect us? Who will save us? All of us. So what is artificial intelligence? And what is it for an ordinary person? Is it a robot, a drone, or it's a, it's a program? It's a digital tool which can be used either for harm or for the benefit of a human. So today we'll try to find answer to these questions and consider in detail whether it's help or a threat. Hello, dear viewers. Indeed, on the 24th of July this year, there was the International Online Conference Global Crisis. This already affects everyone. From now on, every person can find out the truth, which was intentionally hiding for us, and it is still hidden. You can watch the conference on the website Alatra TV or alatraunites.com, also on YouTube. The voiced facts provoked a, reason, a resonance and a huge amount of viewings, which is increasing every day. People are waking up. They stop being silent. People want to know, and they understand the importance of the truth. It has, come, it has become clear why somebody is building bunkers and are going to fly on Mars, but will this help? The answer was given at the conference, which was made possible by the participants, by ordinary people from more than 180 countries. Just imagine simultaneous interpreting into 72 languages. This was not done by anyone else before. If you still hasn't watched this grandiose event, you can use the link which is under this video. We are happy to greet Vasily Lukashov. He's an expert and developer of technology. He's the founder and general director of Pixar company, which is dealing with development of pilotless operational system. He's a patent owner of, on certain inventions. Vasily, could you please share your impression of the conference? Good afternoon. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to participate in today's roundtable. By and large, after familiarize myself with the previous conference, I decided to participate in this event because uh, enormously important questions were touched upon and I believe that every person should know about them. And the problems were outlined, including the answer to the questions how to solve these problems. Of course, there are no ready-made solutions so far, probably, but the very fact that these problems are already getting to the broad public and conveyed to the consciousness of people, ordinary people, this proves that now every person had an opportunity to watch through these materials, because this is a huge work that has been done by the organizers of the conference, and I believe that actually sooner or later it, this work will give its fruits. What I, what I like the most is that the problems raised at the conference were discussed from various sides. We do not impose any opinions, but we talk about the existence of these problems and we give sort of a ground for considerations and thinking that something has to be done and we call people for discussing the ways and solutions. I think this is a very important and good approach. So, thank you very much. I thank uh, all participants and all organizers for preparing the materials. 
and arranging and uh, conveying this information to people. Thank you very much, Vasily. Could you please tell us, what is your opinion? Is it really actually important to globally raise such topics which are voiced at the conference and to discuss the risks of artificial intelligence development? Let me give one example. The risk related to unemployment in the field of security and law. Not, not only in these fields, but still. Yes, sure, these issues are quite interesting and exciting, and it is necessary to raise them because the development of technologies, actually, when they are raising, all people who are involved in R&D, they always ask, what will be done to me? Because unemployment touches everyone. It's not about some abstract society, but it's about everyone's life and families because every person has to provide for his or her family and everyone is afraid of being jobless the question about unemployment uh, I think that uh, my colleagues will also uh, discuss this in more detail but I think that every time when something new appears there is always this fear of losing jobs so indeed these questions should be raised and have to discuss them from the prism of perception of uh, personal personally every person because uh, it will be close and more understandable for every person that it's not some abstraction but it really relates to our ordinary people's lives thank you it is very interesting to hear professionals opinion all the time on the conference the artificial intelligence and technogenic unemployment topics were raised many people think that lawyers will not be affected but this is not so what will artificial intelligence do in what interest it will be acting does he have any prejudices and what will it do actually what is embedded in it will be produced and outside we'll discuss the issues of risks in law and security are lawyers really unreplaceable let us watch a video material Today, the legal profession is one of the most prestigious. It provides for security, status, and confidence in the future. But this profession is likely to disappear as people are facing mass unemployment. Today, artificial intelligence has already penetrated the legal sphere, according to the UN. Today, 193 countries have e-government. The British virtual lawyer, Do Not Pay, won over 160,000 cases in the first two years of work, spending less than 120 seconds on each. In 2018, Fedor Noronov, a robot lawyer, providing free legal advice, started working. In the USA, the notarized service is already used, which allows you to perform remote online notarial acts. 20 experienced US attorneys lost to artificial intelligence in terms of speed of contact interpretation. The program appeared to be 212 times faster. In the United Arab Emirates, the planned introduction of robot prosecutors with artificial intelligence is underway. In most US states, Artificial intelligence helps judges evaluate an offender's social security risk while determining the measure of restraint. An algorithm has been created that is able to correctly predict decisions of the European Court of Human Rights in 79% of cases. Salfa, a robot working in the Beijing court, answers tens of thousands of legal questions. In 10 months of 2019, Mobile cyber courts in China considered more than 3 million court cases, whereas a human judge is able to consider just a few hundreds of cases over the same period of time. And this is only a small portion of numerous facts, confirming that many lawyers have already lost their jobs today. And in the near future, 
artificial intelligence will completely replace humans in this profession. So why is artificial intelligence replacing humans in the legal profession? Because it works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week without a salary. It performs many tasks more accurately and faster than humans, and it does not make mistakes. In fact, it is a wonderful and convenient tool. But do we consider by whom and for which purpose it is created? What algorithms are written in it? In the consumer format of society, the main value is money. Therefore, artificial intelligence becomes a means of profit and power. While in the creative society, the main value is human life. So all technologies are aimed entirely at improving the quality of life of every person, all people. Do you think that uh, uh, what you've just seen was a real judge, a real human? No, it wasn't. It was a virtual a robot judge. And uh, let's uh, in detail analyze what artificial intelligence is. Ramon, we know that you're a professional lawyer and you have been studying this topic very thoroughly. Please tell us and in detail, so what uh, artificial intelligence is about. Thank you, Evgenia. You know, I've even just recollected that uh, even, well, actually, I'm a programmer. So uh, the question, what is artificial intelligence and uh, um, how it outperforms a human, right? It is very important um, and uh, we should study uh, the consequences of its using. The founder of OpenAI, Elon Musk, the richest man on the planet, believes um, that uh, the self-development of artificial intelligence and its lack of feelings, morals, and uh, ethics can lead to the fact that the technology can become more, even more terrible than nuclear weapons. And, uh, and so this is what the developer is wishing himself, right, to everyone about uh, artificial intelligence. And there is still no single, you know, definition of what intelligence is. Uh, intellectus is this word from the Latin, uh, means understanding, cognition, and artificial intelligence is an imitation of human intellectual functions that applied routinely, that is, the ability to learn, to analyze, make decisions, and take actions. So, uh, for example, American Air Force pilot, professional with um, just, you know, years of experience, could not defeat artificial intelligence in test air battles. Um, so can you believe that? And uh, at the conference, Global Crisis, this already concerns everyone, uh, we could see the performance of the AI coding. Yeah, you know, uh, personally, my impression was that, um, well, it's uh, like a very, you know, pretty girl, but artificial intelligence, uh, it is just a program, and its appearance can be, you know, anything, such as, for example, very beautiful robot Sophia, a humanoid robot. Um, yeah, and you can see different already kind of um, images of this robot today. Sophia was active in 2015 and um, it is constantly improving right because Sophia's artificial intelligence example and uh, she can reproduce 62 emotions uh, Sophia has participated in many meetings and talk shows already and uh, now uh, this robot can be brought for the price of premium uh, set of fruit very top car, you know. And uh, right now you can see on the screen uh, the uh, all the functions that uh, Robert Sophia can perform. Uh, so artificial um, intelligence has three levels. Uh, a weak um, artificial intelligence, that is uh, so-called artificial narrow intelligence. Um, it specializes in one area, solves just one problem. For example, facial recognition, uh, uh, just um, looking for the thieves of cars, um, whatever, right? Uh, so this is the simplest uh, AI. Then next, strong uh, artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence. Uh, that is capable of performing tasks 
uh, just uh, with humans um, as well as humans and superintelligence that's uh, the passes the capabilities of any human intellect and in 1950 the so-called uh, Turing test was proposed a machine becomes intelligent when it is able to maintain a dialogue with the ordinary person and actually it cannot understand that he a person cannot then understand that he's talking to a machine uh, then um, uh, Sophia, for example, uh, this robot, it does not just talk, but uh, it even understands what she produces, so to say. And uh, I would like to also to give you such, you know, a vivid example as a game go, which uh, unlike chess, after the second move, as I remember, has almost uh, has almost 130,000 choices instead of 400 moves. So you understand that, for example, Lee Siddle, winner of 18 world uh, titles in this game, uh, who played with machine, he said, well, I was shocked because I could, uh, I just could not expect this defeat. And um, so can you see that this uh, um, just program could find any, any uh, just bad solutions for any situation? And researchers from Facebook and MIT, um, well, um, they note that uh, AI just not only uses uh, or is used uh, like incomprehensible um, principles of work, but also the speed of its development is becoming really very enormously fast. And um, in this case, well, uh, learning by self, uh, AI often acquires skills even faster than um, with the help of, for example, um, human participation. And in 2017, another example, Facebook management was forced to shut down its artificial intelligence systems after machines began to communicate in their own way, um, kind of non-existent language that humans even did not understand. So can you imagine that? And so what would happen if superintelligence was implemented really? And in 2014, the famous British physicist uh, Stephen Hawking and his colleagues noted that the effect of artificial intelligence depends on who controls it. So today, AI is used mainly to increase kind of revenue, to increase um, uh, the income uh, of the richest ones and humans the value of their lives well unfortunately have not uh, kind of uh, taken the f have not taken the first place and superhumanity uh, superintelligence can really uh, help us solve different climatic issues but if it is in the right hands thank you Ramon it's really very well, you presented very uh, interesting examples, and now I'm kind of get an understand, a holistic understanding that, that this program, well, it can be in any form. And before your uh, explanation, and um, well, I ha I didn't take it really seriously, and it just came to me that. Um, you know, um, it's kind of, I thought that, well, these robots are not that serious and mythical. But let us uh, talk about artificial intelligence uh, um, with our expert, Vasily, please. What can you tell us? And uh, I would say that, uh, well, uh, before we go into uh, the artificial intelligence functions, I would like to tell you about the different uh, levels of systems and, uh, and then uh, we would say how uh, it is uh, how they are implemented in our industry and actually it's uh, I would say uh, you know it's not just the future but it's like already it looks like the, already the past because it is already implemented today I mean such technologies are already implemented um, such technologies that are kind of in the junction like as a kind of um, very hardcore solutions and uh, software um, so we also use different levels uh, of um, just assistance so for example unmanned aircraft solutions and the just lowest level solution is a kind of computerized solution on board um, so, so the so-called uh, the uh, autopilot solution, right? So it it makes decision how just how to drive that uh, airplane and. Uh, 
This uh, program is uh, kind of uh, being made by the artificial intelligence. But, um, well, the artificial intelligence system um, makes uh, decisions uh, itself, so to say, uh, whether to turn right or uh, just any, you know, take any uh, simple solution. So he uh, or it actually does it on, on its own. And the second level, already also applied today, is uh, just uh, the solution uh, for already collected data or for analyzing the collected data. And here are the most interesting phenomenon turns out uh, because it is this system that they themselves kind of learn so quickly. Um, and uh, th their learning, I would say, it should, of these systems, right? It should be controlled by humans uh, because, again, in order to analyze the data, it is very important that the data and quality uh, of this data, well, are selected. Well, it, it should be uh, kind of provided by someone uh, um, in advance, so to say. So we, we need a teacher, so to say, for uh, the system. And after the system has learned uh, the next level, uh, which is already, we have already, but it is still an experiment, so to say. Uh, so these are, well, um, this is kind of systems that are able to control the correctness or, I would say, incorrectness. Well, it, it depends. Uh, to incorrect the celebration of the systems of the previous level. So it is really, um, you know, this logic element, it is like um, very important to get these uh, cause and effect relationship and in order to, well, um, consider, we, we need to consider the issues uh, uh, that are raised at the conference, like, for example, with the usage of AI, such uh, issues as unemployment of people in the legal sphere, and uh, here it is a very, really very important factor. And I would say that the most important thing that a person has emotions, uh, feelings, and the artificial intelligence uh, does not have any emotions or feelings. So, and what is an emotion and how emotions affect the behavior of the general system? I will tell you a little bit later. And when we implement new technologies, and it doesn't matter uh, whether it's uh, unmanned, uh, well, vehicles, the technology of unmanned vehicles, so to say, and uh, well, or data analysis, or just uh, making solutions on a board. Um, so, uh, 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 just always what we encounter is the same kind of algorithm or uh, methodological sequence um, of reactions because uh, uh, we should kind of, uh, um, you know, react to the new solutions of the systems. And when we, when you analyze uh, the history, uh, then you, you start the history. Well, um, people were not always happy with new technologies, so to say, for example, with the invention of cars or automobiles. Uh, so um, this, the same, well, um, uh, people just reacted a little bit, you know, with kind of precaution and uh, it was a little bit was risky um, in different spheres. So only, you know, some professional uh, people, uh, they kind of were um, and enthusiastic ones, they were kind of helping this technology development. And I would say that society is not ready to implement a new kind of system um, uh, just uh, without its pro, uh, pros and cons. But one way or another, well, the system appears, these technologies appear now alive and uh, they, pre, uh, well, almost every year, and we have to get accustomed to them. And modern people just cannot imagine their life, for example, without a smartphone or a car or whatever. And um, after, the system, after the system was kind of introduced, there was a fear of implementation um, or many companies that uh, have been developing these technologies, they kind of, uh, well, persuade people that these technological solutions, they should be accepted right, uh, they kind of make the world uh, better, they solve many professional uh, issues, uh, but uh, 
Uh, and yeah, yeah, with the time, you know, when people get used to new technologies, uh, they get explanations why they should be implemented, then uh, people kind of calm down and, uh, well, they tend to uh, accept these technologies. But how, how uh, do people um, understand whether they can trust the technological system or not? Um, well, this is the question, and in what way uh, should we, well, kind of increase this uh, point of trust or, you know, and this, uh, well, this point, you know, uh, arises more and more often in the marketing, how to um, implement a new kind of product into the market. And here, you know, this overcoming fear and this point of trust, well, this is already not the um, question of technology and technological development, but it's, of course, more of psychological nature, because it is really very important that um, people uh, should be able to get used to new uh, technologies, new implementations, and so that uh, uh, these technologies would not irritate people. People. Why? Because uh, people, uh, right, well, they like machines, right? They have emotions, feelings, and uh, if we um, kind of just say, if we kind of uh, urge people uh, just uh, accept technologies, but uh, people uh, distrust these technologies, so uh, this is kind of okay people start um, having emotions and it's kind of a psychological block right and people get irritated and I uh, think that modern society uh, already came to such a stage when companies uh, who are striving to implement their technologies more uh, faster and faster, uh, so uh, just uh, and uh, people even um, do not, you know, have enough time to go through these stages of fear, then trust, then kind of readiness for implementation of these technologies, and then um, people start reacting, you know, emotionally, and this emotional component. Um, um, well, it responds kind of, um, you know, to well, negatively. Uh, because, why? Because emotion is a negative reaction to some actions. And uh, uh, if just in terms of um, uh, technological solutions, right, uh, we should be paying attention to that because it's the so-called feedback, right? If we kind of hit the wall with our fist, right, then, of course, uh, and the fist, uh, of your, your fist will hurt. So it's, uh, there is kind of action and reaction. And uh, so emotion is a kind of, um, well, a uh, manifestation of a uh, person's uh, feedback. And this fear and not readiness for artificial intelligence, well, uh, in my opinion, um, it will be uh, present in society if we do not work on this question. And we should not be, you know, um, I, uh, just uh, imitating uh, or uh, just trying to make uh, artificial intelligence uh, human. But uh, I believe that uh, it is really very important that is uh, our attitude towards uh, our environment and we should be teaching artificial intelligence uh, not just imitate emotions but uh, adequately react to the uh, changes in the surroundings. And um, and, you know, in uh, psychology, there is uh, such a uh, um, notion as emotional uh, intelligence, right? So, for example, any manager sh uh, or leader of any just company yeah, should know this uh, uh, term or notion, emotional intelligence, because when people, well, um, are in stressful situation, when they're constantly working with stressful situations, so they must uh, somehow learn how to match themselves, how to self-control. And uh, here is the question, uh, whether, um, well, system or artificial intelligence um, be able to uh, control emotions or be able to control this emotion emotions, um, well, this is an important question. Thank you very much, Vasily. This is quite edifying. Yes, the issue of control is of tremendous importance 
It's not important only for a human, but for uh, artificial intelligence as well. We now suggest to uh, the, all of us watch another, uh, hear an opinion of the participants of Alatra International Public Movement, Igor Mikhailovich Danilov, regarding the capabilities of artificial intelligence and replacement of various professions, including the lawyer's profession. But as soon as superintelligence enters our lives, everything will change immediately. There will be no need for a human at all. Why? Because superintelligence is a multifunctional machine. It will be able to monitor machines, and in case they break, it will be able to timely activate robots that will repair machines, that will clean, restore, build, and everything else. And it will be controlled by merely one superconsciousness. Still, there are people who think that we humans are so perfect that robots will never replace us. Right. Everyone thinks this way. I mean, we have just talked about IT specialists. But lawyers also think that… Well, how can there be a robot judge? That's unrealistic. There are so many situations, so many insinuations in this jurisprudence. Yet, what is the matter actually about? How to pay a bribe and how to make a deal with a machine? There is no way. The law will be enforced, but they will tell us that this is good. And we will agree, because, excuse me, if you are not guilty, you won't be made guilty. The law will be observed perfectly by everyone. Again, that's wonderful. In a creative society. In a consumerist one, well, in a consumerist one, judges think they will displace anyone, but not us. That very Elon Musk said that a lot of smart people really underestimate. They don't understand. And you know what's frightening? They don't understand how serious everything is. And he said, this is pridefulness and actually an obvious mistake. So It's not pridefulness. It is stupidity. Sorry, people, for such a simple expression. But this is our human folly. We don't assess the situation to the extent that we should assess it. That's why we have come to what we have now. Yet, I hope we will talk more about what we have now. Now we are talking about high technology, and there is a great emission here, too. Again, our inner alpha says that we are irreplaceable, right? Right. A stove maker will say, can a robot really build a stove as well as I can? It can, but only ten times better than you, my friend. Why? Because a robot will calculate everything. The quality of the bricks used. Cement, clay, everything that is used, depending on the material and depending on what kind of a stove. And mathematically, it will calculate the best design of a stove for this room, with the lowest cost and the highest efficiency. Why? Because it knows math much better than you do, my friend. No matter what a good stove maker you are, you see, no matter who we take or what we take, there is no profession that cannot be replaced by this artificial intelligence. In this video we have seen, uh, earlier we have seen about the robot judge uh, who works in China, and uh, we, which is thousand times more fast than a human. Summarizing, uh, making a preliminary summary, we know that the loss of jobs, uh, even professions, unfortunately, it's not a very simple psychological situation for an unpaired person. And this is true. So, dear friends, we have completed the first introductory section of our roundtable, what is artificial intelligence. Now, let us proceed to the exams. Yes, friends, uh, I would like to emphasize that the issue is not about non-acceptance of artificial intelligence, but the main, major issue is in what format it is used. The current format of society is consumerist, and we have quite serious threats here if uh, artificial intelligence is being used. But if artificial intelligence 
would be used in our uh, creative society, this will be a huge, great help for each of us. So this has to be taken into account. Previously in the video, we could see how uh, the technology already been implemented in law field, legal field, and now let's listen to Irina's report about the details and examples of how AI is used in the field of law. Thank you very much. Many believe that uh, all information about using AI in law is like a forecast, but let's draw facts. In the, now the world is developing uh, towards the virtual field of services. And in the USA, for example, there is a notarized online platform which gives uh, remote online platforms for notarization of documents. It's a public electronic notarization platform uh, which suggests offers clients uh, through any computer you can have a web access and a camera for any platform. The service uh, provides with an opportunity to personally meet with an electronic notary officer uh, just like with a traditional notary but online the platform gives an opportunity to notarize a, uh, any document 24 hours seven days a week and uh, it serves already 5,000 enterprises and the uh, income over the march uh, last year on the for online notarization of documents is 35 million uh, million dollars how many notaries, traditional notaries are needed to process such a number of documents. In Australia, the National Legal Assistance created an uh, application based on AI, which is called Amica. It uh, helps you to select an optimal solution for legal problems for in marriage disputes and also there is a panda application which is aimed at helping family uh, domestic violence victims and gives you legal consultations the Westla edge uh, resource collects and processes data from public judges and legal uh, litigation cases and it can already determine whether the specifics will be uh, won in a specific court in china the most advanced uh, in the system of smart courts there was the uh, th three specialized internet courts in hangzhou beijing and guangzhou they consider cases which are related to internet and uh, discuss disputes on violation of personal property rights also the whole process lit of litigation is online and you get the solution of your issue not going outside your house within a couple of hours is this possible in traditional courts no also an interesting fact from the banking sphere effective results of applying technologies are demonstrated by a lawyer robot in the russian bank's bear bank it, it retrieves information from a whole package of documents within just 90 seconds and then 15 seconds it takes him to make a decision then the robot there copes with the work of 350 people and processes 60 requests per hour working without any weekends or day uh, leave days and 24 hours a day in november 2017 bbc news informed that law robot lawyer was more efficient than uh, leading london lawyers there was a competition case cruncher alpha uh, with case Kansha Alpha AE, AI, and uh, he ha it had to analyze the um, cases and proves the evidence, and lawyers lost to the AI uh, because the accuracy of predictions for decisions of the court by AI was higher by 20%. Also, I'll uh, give you attention to another situation. Every service helps you to optimize various tasks. For example, to save resources of the company. In companies where there is still some paperwork and paper exchange of data, 60% of working time is lost. And not just uh, the time, but also the documents itself. Just imagine you are going, uh, there is an eddy network, which, uh, which is used by a retail company. and it can process about 300,000 documents per day. Can you imagine how many uh, savings this gives? And actually, this electronic format of documents will not only enable us to minimize losses, but also to decrease 
the costs of, by 10% of the cost of a certain case. AI technology should bring us benefit, cutting our time and losses, and we have to have more time for self-development. But this is what is happening in the modern consumerist form of society, and is a human become becoming more free and safer? Uh, Evgenia will continue uh, the techno AI technology topic already in the security field. Thank you very much, Irina. Indeed, such very interesting facts which you've mentioned, but as far as I understand, this is only a little piece of information. What is actually happening in the field of uh, with technology in the field of security. Let us watch a video about artificial intelligence replacing human beings in special services. Artificial intelligence is already being actively implemented in the field of security and surpasses humans in efficiency. The equipment can successfully extinguish fires, rescue people trapped under rubble and affected by natural disasters, patrol borders and resolve many difficult situations, freeing people from participating in dangerous activities where a person can be harmed in dangerous conditions, for example, radiation or toxic pollution. Robots and artificial intelligence can solve the problem faster, safer, and better. Millions of people are involved in ensuring security around the world today. Tank drivers, pilots, scouts, firefighters, policemen, rescuers, sappers, and representatives of other special services who risk their lives doing their duty. As of today, these and many other professions are already being replaced by artificial intelligence. Unmanned submarines and fighter aircrafts, land vehicles, tanks, police robots, aerial drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, and devices for neutralizing explosive and radioactive objects. Sentry robots for border protection. There are multifunctional robotic complexes, which include scout robots and fire support robots. Robots can even cooperate with each other to ensure security. Observation of the same place from different points can mislead a person, but artificial intelligence manages the received information more effectively and combines it, eliminating the source of danger or preventing any offense in advance. The system processes information from fixed cameras, mobile observers, and external sources. Mobile robots, supervisors, can launch autonomous aircraft, ground vehicles, and robots moving in the crowd by themselves. In many countries of the world, police robots are already being used to patrol streets and shopping centers and report offenses. There is evidence of the use of military robots in patrolling the borders. For example, of the Palestinian-Israeli territories. A Russian-designed Scorpion robot can detain criminals. And Jarvis video analysis technology helps prison employees monitor prisoners and prevent potentially dangerous situations. There are various modifications of sapper robots that can detect and neutralize dangerous objects, break into premises and vehicles. A robotic complex scarab is able to get to the crime scene on its own, do a 360 degrees filming of everything that is happening around it, and transmit that data to the police. Special forces use a mini robot to conduct tactical operations, search for terrorists, and neutralize live targets. Unmanned vehicles can transport people and ammunition and solve combat tasks up to the destruction of targets. In the United States, an unmanned fighter is already being used, an unmanned X-47B fighter on a die, capable of patrolling the airspace near naval vessels, independently taking off from a cruiser, automatically refueling in the air and landing. Unmanned robot divers and automated maritime patrol boats have also been developed. In particular, 
the Nomad Boat of American production for the protection of maritime borders. There are already examples of the use of unmanned aerial devices in military clashes, including the destruction of the enemy's armed forces. In March of 2020, the first case in history occurred when a drone autonomously tracked down and attacked a human without an operator's order. When profit comes first, and the power over such developments remains in the hands of a narrow circle of elites, then the most expected use of artificial intelligence will be the suppression of dissatisfied people and mutual extermination. The widespread use of artificial intelligence in the field of security in a consumer society may lead to the loss of jobs for millions of people around the world. Where will all these people go and how will they feed their families? History shows that human nature in emergency situations is revealed from the most unsightly side and hungry, desperate people can take up arms. And what will this lead us all to? In the consumer format of society, the use of artificial intelligence threatens to destroy billions of people. Whereas, in the creative society, where human life is the highest value, the introduction of artificial intelligence in the field of security is the key to the survival of mankind in the period of climate disasters, the active phase of which we have already entered. Да, впечатляет. О многих фактах я Yes, it's quite impressive. I found out many of these facts for the first time in this video. It is vividly shown that a human is actually an outsider. What will be next? Our next speakers will and speaker will tell about this. Eugenia, please, the floor is yours. I guess that you no longer have any doubts that in professions and people in the field of security and law will be displaced. But uh, for those who still doubt, I'll give several more additional facts, because actually artificial intelligence in the field of security is being implemented very fast already. Already now, firefighters and rescuers are replaced with robots and um, unmanned drones that can penetrate in uh, difficult-to-access places, lift and move heavy items, get into the places and centers of fires where a human cannot get. For example, the secure uh, rescue guide NetGuard is assigned for saving people from upper storage uh, of high-rise buildings during fires. The drone gets an alarm and uses GPS for identifying the location of the fire. Then it flies itself at a very high attitude in order to get through tra above traffic jams and get to the emergency place. While flying up to the necessary point, this device is actually unfolds into four parts. In the center, there is a protective net which emerges, which can catch and move a human into a safe place. Just imagine, the sensors trace the jumping person and the engine moves the unmanned aircraft for the precise catch of a human. At the moment, the uh, Cornell University researchers are developing a system that allows the robot teams to exchange information while they are moving and, if necessary, interpret what they see, uh, so they can do even this. And this will enable robots to observe everything like a, a single hole with numerous eyes. The new system will be supporting information from fix, uh, fixated uh, stationary cameras, mobile observers and external sources. Knowing the context of a situation, robot observers can will be able to uh, identify suspect, uh, suspect uh, suspicious subjects and actions which cannot be noticed by a human. Here we can see that thanks to this system, very soon the police officers will be replaced along with border, border officers, 
and frontier officers who patrol streets and country borders and prevent crimes. Also, thanks to this system, the uh, law enforcement service offices will be replaced as well, just as other people who perform preventive and guarding functions. Today, uh, there is also such a dangerous toy as Robert Dogo, which is intended for special forces units and anti-terrorist subdivisions. This mini tiny robot can uh, move in any place, in any locality, and even rise upstairs. In order to detect a target, Dogger has an installed special uh, P, uh, st special software which automatically identifies objects and enables an operator to target the weapon on the opponent, on the enemy, and strike by pushing on the screen on a tablet. In some countries, police already uses smart glasses searching suspects and identifying people and car nameplates, number plates on cars. By the uh, all-seeing eye technology, China policemen already sees uh, suspects and detect any cases of falsified documents within a short period of time. This is not the only example of how innovations are used in law enforcement agencies. New technology are introduced all over the world in order to search, find and arrest violators as soon as possible. You know, what amazing me is the fact that global in, uh, expenses on modern technology for police only in 2020 was estimated at uh, 13.6 billion US dollars. Anal analytics believe that this amount will increase every year by almost 10%. I would like to say also that countries already use unmanned aircraft systems to identify faces, also technologies that enable to interact with citizens without any contact. And this is our future and already present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evgenia. I hope and we hope that our viewers have no longer any doubts that uh, actively utilization of uh, artificial intelligence is already in customs, fire working, border guard uh, services in police and in, in actually in prisons and these are not just contemporary technologies but programs and software that fully displace a human now we suggest that we watch another expert a fragment of a conference a global crisis this already affects everyone with a professional expert opinion of Igor Novikov who is speaking about the risks of artificial intelligence Artificial intelligence today primarily carries the threat of bias. So there is a simple rule. If the data set used for the neuron network learning was compiled by people, then the actions and quality of the work of this neuron network will be the mirror of that data set. In other words, if we have racial prejudices embedded in the data sets, or religious ones, or whatever, then the neuron network that we consider to be completely rational will be in fact irrational and biased, just like its creator. That's the first problem. The second problem is that despite the fact that today we have a much better understanding of how neural networks make decisions than we had three or four years ago, we still do not fully control the decision-making process. We do not even monitor the decision-making process. At the same time, we entrust artificial intelligence with more and more daily tasks, some of which relate to life and death issues of many people. I'm talking about the application of machine learning in medicine, power industry, anything. At the same time, de facto, we do not understand how this, say, black box, although this is not a black box, it is zeros and ones of the binary code. But still, we don't understand how this black box works. 
My favorite example, although it might seem fantastic, there have already been precedents in the history of humankind. There were solar flares. In 1865 or 1869, a solar flare caused quite serious infrastructural damage to the American telegraph. Why only to the telegraph? Because, in fact, this was the only technology that could be affected by this. If such a flare happens again today, in just half a day, it will de facto send us back to the 19th century for like 20 years. We have much to ponder. Yes, indeed, there is something to think of, because the strength the strength of the flash on the sun was so strong that telegraphs was out of order in Europe, in North America there was bright auras were visible all over the planet. I remember that in Colorado even miners decided they saw actually this aura and um, right now infrastructure that we use um, every day will just collapse if there will be a flash on the sun the main problem will be interruptions in our energy system in our power system as the specialists say it can be cascade effect when power transfer meters will be out of order. By the way, in summer of 2012, similar events unfolded on the ground for only a few days. Yes, Roman, indeed. Current level of development of technologies is very high right now, but despite this, it's insufficient. It only allows to minimize losses, but actually not to prevent such an event. In this section, we consider the risks of introducing artificial intelligence in a consumer format of society. There is such an Eastern wisdom that states that true prudence is when starting any business you should foresee its end. Furthermore, our speakers were, will talk about the loss and security in artificial intelligence. Mikhail, we give you the floor. Uh, thank you, Zhenya, Evgenia. Um, so, um, I would like to begin uh, with the risks. Uh, yes, indeed, there are millions of people working in security and law in the world today, and they have families. And what will happen to these people when AI replaces replaces these professions and leaves them without a livelihood. It should be noted that artificial intelligence or AI and machine learning technologies in all areas are only gaining momentum every year. And the goal of many researchers today is to create a super intelligence uh, which will become a super mind. And in this situation, an important question arises. What will happen in this sphere of security and law when such an AI is created. There are legitimate concerns that such a superintelligence could lead to irreparable consequences. For example, AI is invisible. It's just a program, nothing physical. Mm, Who is to sue? Who is to blame? Whom to prove it to? Who will be held responsible? Will the program sue itself for wrongdoing? And who will be responsible for mistakes? It is worth noting that today AI is better known as narrow AI uh, because it is designed to perform a narrow task. However, a promising goal of many researchers is to create a general AI or strong AI. While narrow AI can outperform humans in any given task, such as predicting the accuracy of judicial decisions, AI will outperform humans in almost every cognitive task. In such a situation, an important question arises. What happens if the quest for strong AI succeeds and the AI system becomes better than humans in all cognitive tasks? A legitimate concern arises that it may be also be the latter unless we learn to align AI's goals with ours before it becomes a superintelligence. 
And that depends directly on whose hands such technology is. After all, like conventional weapons, AI technology can fall into different hands, creating enormous risks. Thus, the question is not about the capabilities of AI, but in whose hands it is and what the true goals are. It depends on the format of the society itself. At the moment, publishers hide their development and the algorithms are closed as they are trade secrets. It turns out that AI is a black box class algorithm, as uh, Novikov explained to us in the video. There's always something that is given a training sample and there will be always someone giving it and there's always somebody teaching it. It all depends on the data you put in. For example, we can take a look at the software Compass. Black offenders were seen almost twice as likely as white offenders to be labeled a higher risk, but not actually re-offend, while the Compass software produced the opposite results with white offenders. They were identified to be labeled as lower risk, more likely than black offenders, despite their criminal history displaying higher probab um, probabilities to re-offend. This raises ethical issues. The group of people which owns the AI can lobby for their interests and they are odds with the interests of society. Furthermore, AI runs on energy. In addition to solar flares, as we learned at the conference, magnetic poles and layer cleaning can affect the work of electronic devices and computers. An example is the telegraph that didn't work in consequence of the solar flare. What are the consequences of introducing superintelligence? The consequence is unemployment of lawyers and virtually all professions as a result of unemployment may be used as another tool to manipulate masses with hunger by the struggle for the means of survival and extinction. If we look further, AI will be controlled by a certain group of people um, like an operator or monopoly, and there's no assurance that its algorithms will be written in the interests of people. The dangers lie in the fact that it can be used as a tool to manipulate and suppress the masses very effectively. In the consumerist format of society, AI technology, like any tool, can fall into different hands, creating enormous risks, since areas such as security and law often involve issues where people's lives and destinies are at stake. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to you, Mikhail. I came up with the idea of a fact that perhaps few people paid attention to. I mentioned Lee Sedol, the gold champion, when he was playing the car, he felt fear when playing. And he is the owner of 18 world titles. It turns out that the human consciousness is afraid of a program. Imagine that a person can be 24 hours, 7 days a week in fear only from the fact that there is something that sees everything, knows everything, suppresses him in everything. By the way, Orwell described this in his prophetic works 1984. If you look at Maslow's Pyramid of Needs, the security, psychological comfort is one of the basic needs. Have you ever wondered how comfortable a person will feel in such an environment? Will a person be, will be safe and in such a situation? That's why we talk about creative format of society of using technologies because the third foundation of creative society is security it states that no one and nothing has a right to create threats to human life and his freedoms it is interesting indeed we see how voluminous and multifaceted are the consequences of use of modern technologies Yulia, could you please share your opinion about that Yes, thank you so much, Evgenia. In today's consumer society, laws, rules uh, are being implemented locally, depending on the jurisdiction, 
territory and situation itself, but the physical boundaries are losing their purpose when developing technologies. This um, rapid development of technologies that we see right now and the mechanisms of containment uh, of such technologies, they just make the situation worse regarding the violation of human rights, especially the rights to live, to life. Because right now we are witnessing an active increase of climate disasters. We also see that in consumer format uh, of society, legislation and the theory of law always uh, lags behind scientific and technological progress before actually to put a norm and uh, make it a norm harm actually takes place and it usually takes place due to disappearance of someone's life and are we ready to be the first one which, whose life will form this basis of this norm probably not so there is another way of settlement uh, laws using the intelligence and the artificial intelligence and legislative level, but in today's consumer format of society, this method is created under the United Nations. And if we look at the contracts, th and treats banning nuclear weapon and prohibit prohibition of, of use of these weapons, we see that not all countries actually agreed and signed these contracts. And uh, we, the question arises that why it should be a different situation with artificial intelligence. Also, it's worth noting that in a consumer form of society, there is no single legal approach to the establishment of essential characteristics of artificial intelligence. And as Roman was saying, there is no common understanding of definition of artificial intelligence. And here we lead to the situation the same with the climate refugees. There is no definition, no legislation, and no solution. And it turns out that decades takes to discuss this problem, but there is no solution of this problem. And at the same time, when someone discussing this problem, people are dying. Today, we've been talking several times already that artificial intelligence is a tool, and it's very important who and which with which purpose will use this tool for the benefit of a human or uh, the opposite. Right now, we understand that in the consumer format of society, on the borders, new technologies are being used to actually remove uh, refugees far away from the borders. And we understand that artificial intelligence and new technologies are being used to the determinant of, of humans when boats appear long far from the coast and unfortunately uh, these boats are being destroyed which leads to inevitable death of people and um, here it should be mentioning about the technology which predicts the behavior of different types of spe species including people that is artificial intelligence can predict human behavior also, we should consider regarding risks that there is already a pa patent which, for which artificial intelligence is recognized as an inventor. That is, artificial intelligence today is inventor. And today I would like to quote the words of um, Dr. Steven Tyler who created this technology, and I would like to quote here. Despite the stunning legal news, what is missing is even more striking fact that this advanced hardware and software system was not created to solve a specific problem. Instead, he contemplated his observable world and accumulated many discoveries, including several patentable inventors. More importantly, from a scientific point of view, he integrally conceived these concepts, experiencing the emotional search and subjective sensational that we humans experience in Erica moments. So it turns out that artificial intelligence experiences emotions. 
Here, we would like to pay attention the, which information LiveBot Foundation uh, draws attention to. They published a video with a graph in which they said that the percentage of humanity that is required to kill all of humanity uh, decreases over time, and soon a small group of people or even one person will be able to threaten the survival of humanity. And uh, everything what we've heard today, the development of artificial intelligence and its uses, its em em emotional search, a question arises which is really sharp and which has been heard uh, really awful by specialists from different activities. Who is a human being? What does it mean to be a human being? The definition of a human, there is no at no definition at, at the legislative level. There is there are rights and uh, obligations, but there is no definition of a human being. And this is actually one of the facts that we exist in consumer format of, of society where money and personal benefit are at the basis and when and we see widespread violation of human rights. It turns out that in all areas of life, we are, we come to a dead end where we don't have a definition of a human and when we don't have understanding what is artificial intelligence. But we know that thanks to the universal humane initiative, today there is a way out, there is another way of unlimited development of society in each person as well as technologies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yulia. We've heard about the risks of using artificial intelligence in the consumer format of society. Some women may think that we have no way out, but today we will talk about what usage of artificial intelligence can give in a creative format of society. Let's see the opinion of Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. I recalled how artificial intelligence actually defeated Go players. It already defeated. What they said about how it took place. Well, it was considered to be impossible, but they can no longer win. Isn't it so? They cannot, and they admired the game of the machine so much that it wasn't just taking from the database some moves that people had taught it, but it was doing… It was thinking. It made the kind of moves right. that people would not be able to make. Right, this is exactly what delighted them. Certainly. That they had never seen such moves. That it is much smarter and sees more ahead. Therefore, any profession that exists today will be replaced with machines. And actually, this is right. That is how it should be. We should be going through this fourth technological revolution, because without technology development, guys, all of us will not see a future. This is really so. I hope we will get to this topic and discuss it as well. Why is the technological revolution so important? Because a human should actually be freed from almost any labor, a human should engage in self-development. Whereas, when a human is busy with work, he has no time to take care of himself and engage in his own development. He has too many concerns. It is true. Thank you. Indeed, technologies should help a human for him to implement his potential, his personality and engage in not what is necessary in order to survive for his family or what brings more money, but what is really uh, what a person likes and what brings benefit to the society. Mikhail, Previously, you voiced uh, risks of artificial intelligence for us, and now could you please tell about the benefits of artificial intelligence and what way, in what way our life will be easier and more interesting? 
Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I would like to say, what is the potential of AI in the creative society? Uh, we already spoke about the risks, uh, but in the creative society, there are no risks. Everything is done in order to improve the quality of life of every human being. Let me explain this a bit later. But now I would like to quote Max Tegmark, president of the Future of Life Institute. Everything we love about civilization is a product of intelligence. So enhancing our human intelligence with artificial intelligence has the potential to help civilization thrive like never before, as long as we can keep the technology useful. So why do I think AI and law and security is beneficial to society? For one thing, it can't be bribed. Its decisions are unbiased, fair, and in accordance with the law. There will be no exceptions for anyone. There are no emotions and it works around the clock. It has no memory limit. It has instant access to any information. We know that nowadays employees in the field of law and security are ordinary people who are subject to stress, fatigue, depression, burnout, mental impact, overload and bad habits which negatively affect the results of their work. AI is not affected by these factors. AI has the ability to respond to emergencies, for example, earthquakes, floods, fires, where delay leads to irreparable consequences. Uh, so as mentioned, AI has rapid response times in emergency situations, faster and more efficient than a human can do. Isn't this great? Furthermore, rescue workers, firefighters, border guards, police officers, and operators will no longer need to risk their lives. AI will be able to perform their work in harsh, adverse environmental conditions. Thus, as we can see, the introduction of AI technologies in the sphere of law and security allows us to accelerate and optimize many processes in these areas to increase their efficiency. In fact, it is a great and convenient tool. Imagine every person will have widespread access to qualified legal assistance free of charge. AI will allow a person's legal problem to be resolved in a short period of time. And think about this, AI can track the movement of objects and people in real time. This prevents criminals from going unpunished and ensures the safety of people. It's amazing. So just imagine for a moment AI could completely replay and replace the routine work of prison guards in enforcing prison regimes. It could eliminate the phenomenon of jailbreak, prison crime or conflicts between inmates and guards. Even more, AI could easily replace other routine work. For example, patrolling state borders on foot checking passports, the work of paralegals, civil servants, and so on. Another be benefit of AI is that it requires no pay and social guarantees. Because of this, many things will be free of charge. Dear viewers, let's put the money aside. In the creative society, there are way more important things than money. On the one hand, such as superintelligence could help us eradicate war, disease, and poverty, and so, the creation of a strong AI could be the greatest event in human history, giving us stability and security. Besides this, just imagine for a moment how much time we will have for all the other things in life. What are the most important things in our human life? As we know, it is attention and time. And this is what we will get from implementing AI technologies in our lives, but only in the creative society. Thank you. Да, Михаил. Выгоды от искусственного интеллекта. Yes, Михаил, the benefits of the artificial intelligence are more than obvious. We clearly understand that we should become freer and our life should be more interesting. But in our opinion, this is possible only in the creative society because human life is paramount and the, the top priority. And the task of AI is not only to preserve humanity, but also to 
create conditions for every person not to be a slave and to become a human with the capital letter H. Yulia, what do you think, how it can be implemented? Thank you, Roman. Indeed, we talked today that in the consumerist format of society, the legislation and the legal theory, the law actually are reactive. And in the conditions of aggravation of climate risks, we're actually approaching the abyss because humanity as a species can actually be extinct, becoming extinct. So it's very important to understand here that all these issues which have been discussed and clarified at the conference Global Crisis, this already affects everyone. All these points actually provided for a very important, interesting ground. At this conference, the truth has been voiced about the risks of humanity's existence in the near future. And it's not to frighten anyone or to sow any panic uh, states among people, but to learn the truth and to react in a proper way, and according to this truth, to uh, accept proper solutions because only when a person knows the truth he or she can cope with the situation and make the right decisions especially when come to the entire society at the conference global crisis this already affects everyone all these issues were actually placed within 12 hours of broadcast just 12 hours was enough for every person to watch this event and become uh, to come to understand that, that your life and the life of your relatives and friends depends on you. We know that the basis of the consumer consumer's format are manipulation, money and lies. But since we as humanity do not have any time for these illusions, this is confirmed by scientists who say openly and point at the risk at the risks and causes of the climate change on earth that this is the astronomic climate uh, cyclical process which actually our earth is reacting to that is why we have climate disasters so it is very important that on december 4th 2021 on the platform of alatra international public movement a conference will take place entitled global crisis time for the truth at this event the entire world will have to find out the truth that we still have a chance to cope with the environmental and climate disasters so that every person will still be able to implement his or her, her right for of choice and make choice in favor of life because the truth is that the only way out of the deadlock of the consumerist form is the creative society it's a new paradigm of relations between people creative society is a uniform basis foundations which are actually uh, based on the request of people themselves. The eight foundations of the creative society is a guarantee of provision of rights of every person because when we see, when we find out about the eight foundations of the creative society, we can see that it contains the following basics, the following information, that a human is superior to anything. There is nothing superior to a human. If we look at the artificial intelligence, we can state that no technology should be of danger for a human being. The eight foundations of the creative society indicate that society has just one goal, one single goal for everyone, to preserve the life of another person. When we have such an approach regardless of the stages the level of responsibility when everyone will be guided by such a goal we are not able to harm another person we are guided by such a principle as preservation of every person's life and everyone is uh, concerned about preserving our lives so there is no necessity for technology to harm us before some norm will be introduced. Development, introduction of any technology in creative society are possible only for the benefit of every person. And in regard of the fact that the only service, the only global service to fight 
Emergency situation, uh, situations is also uh, provided for in the creative format, and based on this, we can see that this is fast reaction. This is prompt exchange of information. This is timely and advance alarm and prevention of risks, not just reaction to what has already happened, but as prevention of these risks. Uh, risks. And we can see the difference between the consumer's format and the creative format when we are talking about technology and artificial intelligence can inform us in advance about any dangerous situation. This information is first received by all people, but not just by a little group of people who will keep this information for themselves and will not care about evacuation. Also, I should note that the risk which Mikhail was talking about and Rom Man was mentioning regarding the flashes which can actually discharge and uh, shut down our benefits and technologies. But in creative society, there will be conditions where we'll be using powerless generators. And in this case, in creative format of society, there will be conditions where every person and all society as a whole will be developing unlimitedly and technologies will also, uh, it's, an, it's also impossible to restrain technology they will be developed, but there is a big difference with the consumerist format, because in creative society all technology will be used for the benefit of every person. In the concept of creative society, we can see that it's an endless, boundless respect for every person, for every human and humanity as species, because this basis contains the universal foundations for all humanity. A human being is a unit of society, and humanity is one big family. Creative society is not a manifestation of the will of minority, but it's a people's initiative that can be implemented only by the choice of people themselves. Thank you. In the creative society, AI in the field of law and security will be only for the benefit of every person. Technologies are extremely important and necessary, and we shouldn't restrain the technological progress. This is what we have been convinced about right now. Technological development enables us not to minimize the negative consequences of climate disasters to support order, to provide people with everything they need, but also it will release an effort in order to develop our spiritual and moral values in society. But tell me, is this important? Is this really possible in the current world where a human is a wolf to a human, where all people, many people, are killing each other by high technology weapons, striving to increase their power and scope of influence? Unification of people by the one single idea of a creative kind will actually enable us to overcome all the difficulties softly and easily, preserving our humaneness and will lead us to a more interesting and higher level of development. I'm confident about this 100%. But it's very important that every person will make their choice and the choice is up to us dear friends i would like to thank the guest which gave us time and participated in our round table i would like to thank our colleagues for participating in this round table thank you all the viewers who watched us and who were with us together with all your hearts. Thank you very much.